That's so interesting because that is what has been suggested for so many hospitals. Mm -hmm. They're saying, look, you mm -hmm. don't need to have someone there all the time, but if someone is there who wants a VBAC, just during that time, you need people who are available. But right. so few hospitals have been, they've been really unwilling to accommodate that. And I think that's, uh, you hit it on the head when you said unwilling, not unable. And it really is a shame, and it's one of the reasons, again, that, that our C-section rate is, is mm -hmm. climbing ever higher. Right. Tell me about your fee scale, because it mm -hmm. really bears no resemblance. I've seen it. It bears <laughs> no resemblance to a normal obstetric <laughs> fee scale in this country. Right. And explain how you keep your rate so low. Well, one of the reasons we do is our patients pay their bills. You know, the Amish are very upstanding uh, individuals, and they believe that if they've incurred a debt, they should pay it. So uh, our bad debt rate is a small percentage of what most practices are. And Therefore, I, we don't have to build that into our fee scale. I should interject here. I think a lot of Americans don't realize that one of the reasons the scales are so high is because so many people who are uninsured do not mm -hmm. pay their hospital bills. And therefore, that's why people who have insurance are charged so much more. Exactly. That absolutely is true. Right. So that, that's very interesting. That one reason is you get all your bills paid. Right. Another way that we keep our costs down is we do not sign up with the HMOs, and I'm only signed up with one insurance company, and they're an easy company to work with. A lot of physicians' offices have to hire extra staff people to be on the phone the whole time they're at work with the insurance companies just trying to get paid for the services they've already rendered. We don't have to do that. Um, so those are ways that we keep our costs down. Plus. Um, <laughs> My father was a businessman and he believed in volume and we do volume in our community <laughs> and that keeps costs down too. And we should talk, you don't, you don't have to carry malpractice insurance. I do personally uh, as a physician. Uh, the hospital will not allow me to practice there without liability insurance. Although um, at my highest insurance rate, it accounted for about 25% of my fee. So uh, I think people, too, don't realize uh, it doesn't only add to direct costs that the phys physician has to recuperate, but also in what, what I call liability medicine, that doctors order extra tests to prove what they are pretty sure is right, but that adds costs to the patient's care. And they do it not because they think they need it, but to show that they've covered all the bases. And so these things get tacked on and uh, really end up uh, decreasing the quality of care that, are, that the patients get. Let's talk about your future plans because as much as you enjoy working in the community that you've been working in, you're going to make an awfully big move soon. Yes, very soon. Tell us about that. Okay. Uh, for years I've told people that I have the best medical practice in the world and I still believe that. But uh, I was offered the position of the chair of the OBGYN department at o Oklahoma State University Center for Health Sciences, which is our osteopathic school in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I have accepted that position. Uh, it's gonna be a big change for me. We're, we'll be working with a Medicaid clinic instead of my Amish patients. Completely different Completely population. Different. I'm hoping to show that putting these principles to work in a different environment still will decrease the C-section rate, still will give us better outcomes. Because when you talk about a Medicaid population, the first thing people think is high risk. And of right. course, by high risk, they're thinking more C-section rate, mm -hmm. um, all the things that you have avoided in your practice, right. you are gonna try to show. And I hope you're gonna do actual research, published research on this. One of the reasons for the move is so that I have time to do research, which I have not been able to do while I'm in my practice. You know what's exciting to me too is that you're not only going to be practicing, but you're going to be teaching medical students. Mm -hmm. And to be able to imbue them, I think, with this sensibility of what normal obstetrics is all about right. doesn't happen very much anymore in medical schools. Right. In fact, a lot of medical students end up uh, finishing their program without seeing a normal delivery unless it happens to be somebody who comes in ready to deliver and then everybody's in such a panic that they don't appreciate the beauty of a normal delivery. You know, it's interesting you say that in a panic because ob obstetrics has been hit and an emergency mentality has really mm -hmm. taken over obstetrics. Mm -hmm. And to think of someone coming in in natural labor that suddenly mm -hmm. that's an emergency, you just described mm -hmm. people running all around yeah. in a panic, yeah. it's it, it, it would be comical if it weren't so sad in, yes. in how much our view of obstetrics right. and what normal obstetrics is, the definition has completely changed. Right. I do have a lot of medical students that rotate through my practice and they are just amazed 
at the beauty of normal delivery. That is such a wonderful way to end the show. Yeah. Thank you so <laughs> much. For upcoming episodes, viewer feedback, and links to important information, log on to our website at the address that appears on your screen. And always remember to check with your primary care physician before changing your existing treatments. Thank you for watching Health Vision, a production of WOUB Center for Public Media.